The game we're trying to play is to connect the derivatives of a function to properties of its graph. We've already seen the first derivative. It'll tell us where horizontal tangent lines are. It'll also tell us about regions of increasing and decreasing on the graph. So now we're gonna take a look at another property, okay, concavity. Concavity is gonna be controlled by the second derivative. Let's start with some definitions. So first, f is said to be concave up on an interval a, b if the first derivative of f, f prime, is increasing on our interval. Likewise, f is said to be concave down if f prime is decreasing on our interval. Now, let's take a look at what this actually says in terms of a picture. So what's the first derivative? The first derivative tells me the slope of the tangent line to my graph. So let's draw in what it would look like to have f prime increasing. So the biggest we could get would be plus infinity, and that we could think of as just being a vertical line. So as I go across, we're gonna increase the slope. So here it's negative, so the idea is we're gonna add positive numbers to it to make it less and less negative. So it'll jump to say minus three, okay, our slope will look like that. Minus one, we're gonna get flatter. And then as I go all the way out to zero, zero is gonna be where we're horizontal, slope is completely flat. Now, we're increasing, so now we're gonna start growing, coming off of zero, so we're gonna to jump to one, jump to two, six, and then off to another vertical line where we're supposing this is plus infinity. Take a look at what happens if we connect the dots. We're getting a bowl facing up. Okay, another thing to note, concavity isn't gonna have much to say about increasing or decreasing. Here, we're concave up, I'm decreasing on this side, I'm increasing on this side. So, we're not restricted in what we can have in terms of concavity versus increasing and decreasing. You could have it all four different ways that you want. Now let's look at the picture for F prime decreasing. So, we'll start with our slope as positive as it can be. So I'll be a plus infinity, meaning just a vertical line. So we're gonna decrease. So that's gonna come down to a finite number, say six to one, to flattening out at zero. Then it's gonna keep decreasing, so it's gonna become negative from there, go to minus a half, say minus one, and then back to vertical at say minus infinity. Notice, connect the dots, we're gonna get a bowl facing down, and again, you'll see that increasing and decreasing, not restricted at all by being concave down. So that's how we think of the pictures. Now, let's think about what's actually happening when I say F prime is increasing or decreasing. Well, how do you tell increasing or decreasing for a function? You take its derivative. So here we're taking F prime, taking its derivative. That's just the definition of the second derivative. So concave up, concave down, are to be controlled by the second derivative. So here's our test. If second derivative of f is positive on an interval, then it's gonna be concave up on that interval. Likewise, if it's negative on an interval, it'll be concave down on that interval. Let's look at an example. So we have the function f of x equal to x cubed minus 12x. First derivative is 3x squared minus 12. Second derivative is 6x. Now, take a look at the second derivative to check concavity. If x is bigger than zero, then 6x is bigger than zero, so it'll be concave up on this region. We take a look at the graph, and that bears out. If x is less than zero, 6x is less than zero, so it'll be concave down on this half of the graph, and that bears out also. How about if I check a specific point? Let's try x equal to one. If I put that into second derivative, I get a six out. Okay, we know we're already gonna get concave up at that point, but what does that mean geometrically, the six? That's telling me the slope of the tangent line to the derivative. So if I put the graph in for f prime, I take a look at one, put the tangent line in there, that thing is gonna have slope equal to six. So that's a connection between the second derivative, the first derivative, 
and the original function. Okay, try minus one, we get a minus six out. That's gonna be the slope of our tangent line at minus one, and that's gonna be on this side. And note, that has a negative slope. Okay, also note, we're interested in this connection between concavity and increasing and decreasing for the first derivative. That's the definition of concavity. If you note, on this side, our f prime is increasing, and you note on the original graph, we're concave up. On the left side, first derivative is decreasing. That's gonna to correspond to concave down on the original graph. So we see we have some consistency here with our definition of concave up, concave down, and with getting concavity from the second derivative. Next definition, x0 is an inflection point of f if the tangent line to the graph of f exists at x0, and as I go from one side of x0 to the other, we have a change of concavity. In my definition of tangent line, we're gonna allow for vertical tangent lines. So an inflection point measures where concavity changes. Has a little bit more to it though, because we have to have the tangent line defined, it's also gonna measure where the graph splits. Let's take a look at this in an example. So if we use x cubed minus 12x, our candidate for an inflection point is gonna be zero, because that's where we have a change in concavity. So you note, all I need to check is that there's a tangent line at the point. If I put zero into our derivative, I get a minus 12. That's the slope of the tangent line. So zero is gonna be our inflection point. If you draw in that tangent line, what you're gonna notice, okay, so that would be like this. One half of the graph is on that side. This part of the graph is on the other. It splits your graph in two. So geometrically, that's what your inflection point is measuring. Okay, another example. Let's try f of x equal to x to the one third. So here, do our first derivative, do our second derivative. What's gonna happen here is, if I put a positive number in, positive number comes out of this, then I hit it with a negative number. So we're gonna be concave down on this side I put a negative number in. Well, taking the cube root of a negative number gives me a negative number. Then I take it to the fifth power, takes a negative number to a negative number. Multiply out in front by a negative means negative goes in, positive comes out. So it'll be concave up on this side. What's gonna happen for the tangent line? So zero is gonna be a candidate for inflection point. Just gotta check that we have a tangent line there. Well, if you note, the tangent line in this case will be a vertical tangent line, which you're pretty much gonna to have to get from the graph. If you take the derivative, put zero in, you're just gonna be dividing by zero. So you'd need the graph to get a better idea of what's happening there.